So imagine somebody came up to you on the street and asked you about uh, about multiplying a couple of a couple of unit step functions. First, you should look at them very skeptically because it would be extremely unusual for somebody on the street to ask you to multiply unit step functions. But suppose you did, and I'm going to make up one here like this. Suppose you need to convolve this uh, later in the class. Suppose you need to take its Fourier transform, yada, yada, yada. Tackling it in this product form like this is probably not going to be the easiest thing to do. So what I would recommend doing would be to draw out what these two functions look like. So let's take the u function and draw it. This is a u function that has been shifted to the left by 3 from origin, so we'll start it at minus 3. And it looks a little something like this. Let's draw a similar axis for u of t minus 2. Uh, OK, so what's this? This is, now a, this is now a function that's starting at t minus 2 and going like this. OK, so what is this? This is, again, always be, oh man, I can't emphasize enough. Work really hard not to get convolution and multiplication mixed up. Now, let me think about what happens when I multiply. I don't, I'm not sure I finished my sentence earlier. Try not, be really hard not to get convolution and multiplication mixed up, or the properties of convolution mixed up with the properties of, of multiplication. That's an extraordinarily common error that students and occasionally professors named Lanterman will make. So what happens when I pointwise multiply this? This is the kind of pointwise multiplication that you do, you know, and figure out convolution or not. Okay, well... Well, okay, so this guy starts at minus 3, right, like this. And this guy starts at minus 2, but in this particular case, well, what's happening over here? It's going to get chopped off here. All of this stuff over here, it's not actually doing this because it gets chopped off. <laughs> That's the point I wanted to make. All of the stuff in here is going to get chopped off by this. Right, so if I look at something like this, well, this is really equal to u of t minus 2. This is really a red herring. So this is not the most interested case. There's a more interesting case. So here's another case. What about u of t, t minus 2 times u of now, watch this closely, how about 4 minus t? Ooh, now you have to think a little more carefully about this because this guy is not the way we're used to seeing this. So let's rewrite this as u of minus t minus 4. So now let's plot out what these functions look like. So if I've got my axis here, so here I've got a unit step function that starts here. Let's see if I can do this. Ah, there we go. Ah, look at that, look at that, look at that. Okay. So what about this guy here? So this is a mirrored version of a unit step, right? So on its own, it's going to look like this. But now it's been shift. It's been mirrored, but now it's been shifted to the right by four. By four. So on its own, it starts at zero, but... Right, it would start at zero here, but it's been shifted to the right by four. So in this particular construction, if I look at what zero is out, well, this guy here is going to zero out all the stuff over here of the yellow function. And the yellow function here down here, it's going to zero out all the green stuff over here. So when I pointwise multiply these functions, I wind up with a function going from two to four. <coughs> so this is going from 2 to 4. So probably most of the time, whatever problem you're dealing with, if you see something like this, it's probably going to be really difficult to tackle directly in this product form. So if you see a couple of u's multiplied like this, I would recommend rewriting it as u of t minus 2 minus u of t minus 4.